Hi everyone, this is Sharan here. Welcome to my channel. Today in this video, we are going to see about linear iteration model in detail. We are going to see about the some of the concepts as well as terms that are associated with the linear regression model, such as what is an dependent variable, what is an independent variable, what is the regression line, how is this regression line generated using the linear regression model, what is the cost or residual function, and how the accuracy of the model is measured using the linear regression model. So before going into the whiteboard and before starting off with the explanation, if you are looking forward to learn data science, please consider subscribing to my channel. Okay, now moving on to the linear regression model. Linear regression model is commonly used in order to make a prediction. Let's say we want to predict income of a particular person based on few input variables such as the age of a particular person, number of years of experience, number of projects the person has implemented, the location in which the person is based out of and so on. So what we do is we use all these various input parameters in order to make the prediction. So it can be used or it is used in a number of prediction problem, like how much loan a particular customer would require. Right? This could be an use case for a banking customer. Linear regression can be used in a number of prediction problems. So in order to explain what is linear regression model today, what we are going to do is we are going to take a very simple example. So here we are going to take one variable that we are going to predict which is the income of a particular person and we are going to take one input variable which is the number of projects the person has done. So what we are going to do is we are going to use, we are going to pass on the input number of projects the person has done and we are going to make the prediction what would be the income of a particular person. So as you see here the number of projects which is passed on the input variable would be the independent variable because these variables are stand alone variable that is not impacted by any other parameters. On the other hand, the y-axis, the one that we are going to predict, which is the income, would be the dependent variable because the value of, of this uh, income or the value that we are going to predict is dependent on the various inputs that we pass in the linear regression model. So this value that we are going to predict becomes the dependent variable and the various inputs that we are going to pass is the independent variable. So in a linear regression model, normally there would be one value that we will be trying to predict and there would be a number of values that we pass on the input. So there is one dependent variable and a number of independent variable that will be passed on as an input. So that's about like, the dependent variable and the independent variable. So now moving on to the prediction. So how the prediction is being made. So the predict in order to make the prediction, what we use is we use the regression line. So here the regression line represents the relationship between the inputs as well as the output. The, it represents the relationship between the independent variables as well as the dependent variable. So here in this case, in this very simple example, what we have is we have one independent variable and we have a dependent variable which we are trying to predict. So this regression line here will be used in order to make our, in order to generate the predictions. So let's say I want to predict the salary or the income of a particular person whose experience is right over here, right around maybe the mean. So what we do is we try to see where it falls exactly on the regression line and we, we take the corresponding y axis value and that becomes the predicted income for that particular uh, uh, person based on the uh, number of projects the person has done. So how do we generate the uh, regression line? So the equation for the regression line is here y is equal to mx plus c where m is the slope of the regression line and c is the intercept. So when the value of x is 0 wherever the point where the uh, the regression line falls on the y axis so that is the c uh, that is the c value the constant which is nothing but the intercept so now let's see how the slope as well as the intercept or like how the regression line is generated using the linear regression model in a linear regression model the slope of this particular regression line is computed using this particular formula so the approach that we use in a linear regression model in order to in order to get the value of slope and the intercept is called as the 
ordinary least square solver method. So this is the method which is used by the linear regression model in order to make, in order to generate the slope of this particular line as well as the C intercept, which means that it uses this particular method in order to generate the regression line, which will be used in order to make the predictions. So let's first see how the slope is being determined. So the slope is being determined using the formula that you see here, which is nothing but H would be the various value like for this particular dot here, point where it falls on the h axis is the value of h. So h minus h bar, h bar is the mean value for h. So when we have all these uh, inputs, the number of projects, when we take the mean of those values, it becomes h bar. And similarly, y is the value of y and y bar would be the mean of the y value. So if we take a very simple example, so let's say we have this particular example that you see here. So here in this particular example, what you see is, you see there are few h values and then few y values. And the one that is highlighted here in the red box is the mean, which is the h bar. So first what we do is we find out, we find out h minus h bar uh, and y minus y bar. So which is h minus h bar would be the value of h, which is two minus four, it becomes minus two. And y minus y bar would be for y, y value is three here and the y bar the mean is 6 so it would be 3 minus 6 which is minus 3 so we generate h minus h bar here y minus y bar here and then we multiply both of them and then create the third problem so here it becomes the minus 2 into minus 3 becomes 6 and so on so in order to compute the slope so what we do is we do the summation of h minus h bar into y minus y bar divided by summation of h minus h bar the whole square so if you take this particular example here, this column here becomes the numerator. We take the summation of all these values. So it becomes 12. And the square of this particular column becomes the denominator. So it will be minus 2 square, which, which, which becomes 4. 0 square still 0, plus 2 square is 4. So 4 plus 4, 8. So 8 becomes the denominator. So 12 by 8 would be 1.5. So the slope for this particular example that you see here is 1.5. So that's how we use this particular formula here in order to calculate the slope of this particular line. So now we have identified the slope of that particular line. So now we want to know the value of the intercept. So how do we calculate the value of intercept? So in a linear regression model, one thing that is for sure is the value of this, the, this particular linear regression line will pass through the mean of the h value and mean of the y value. So it, if you take mean of h and then if you go straight hit the linear regression line, hit the regression line and then if you see, if you see the y value, it needs to pass through the mean of the y value. So this line always passes through mean of both the h as well as y. So we use that. And what we do is we use c is equal to y bar minus m into h bar, which is nothing but we are moving the m h into the other side. And then what we are going to do is we are going to pass on the y bar as well as h bar in this particular equation. So as you see here, so y bar is 6 minus, we have identified m to be 1.5, which would be 1.5 into value of h bar is 4. So here in this case, it is 6 minus 6, which is 0. So here in this particular example, the intercept, the C intercept value is 0, which means that it exactly passes through here this particular point. So in this particular, in this example that we have taken. So that's about, that's about how the slope as well as the intercept value is being calculated. So the method that we use here in the linear regression model is called as the ordinary least square solver method. So this particular method is used in order to identify the slope as well as C intercept and hence the line, the regression line is generated and we use the regression line in order to make all the predictions. So now what is the uh, cost residual or the error? So all of our predictions lie on this particular red line, the regression line. So the blue dots that you see here are the actual values. So the vertical distance between the blue dot, the actual value, as well as the regression line becomes the error or cost or residual. So these are all the terms that can be uh, 
used in order to measure or in order to uh, in order to identify how bad the particular model is like depending upon how far it is uh, how far the actual values are from the predicted values so this is what uh, the residual trust or error function that will be used in order to measure the accuracy of the model now moving on to the method that can be used in order to know the accuracy of the model so one of the method that can be used to know the accuracy of the model is r square value so as you see r square value can also be called as coefficient of determination and the formula that is used in order to generate the r square value would be here is here so it is nothing but 1 minus summation of y minus y prediction so the actual y value minus the the predicted value the square of it divided by summation of y minus the mean of the y value and then the square of it so depending upon the number of uh, values for which we are making the prediction so the values would be generated and then we would do the summation to add up all of it and the value the resultant of this particular equation will be the r square value so generally the r square value would range between 0 and 1 so in this equation let's say the y value is exactly same as the y prediction so whatever prediction we are making is exactly same as the actual value so it's 100 percent matching with the data so then what becomes is the numerator becomes 0 and hence the r square with a value becomes 1 which means that the model is 100 percent accurate so let's say our model is quite bad so here prediction that we are trying to make is almost close to the mean of the uh, y value so we what we do is we take the interim we identify mean of the interim and then we just use the mean in order to mean as the prediction so then what happens is the numerator as well as denominator is exactly same so then uh, it becomes one so one minus one is zero so the r square value becomes zero so that means that our model is quite bad Technically, the value for R square can also draw in negative, which means that the model is performing really bad. So whatever the regression line that we are, we are we have come up with doesn't explain the actual uh, patterns that is present in this particular data. So that is the concept. So today, what we have uh, covered is we have covered what is a linear regression model, like it, uh, where it can be used. It can be used in a number of prediction. And what is the dependent variable as you see here the dependent variable and what is an independent variable so here in this case we have only one independent variable but we can add on a number of independent variables as we add the number of independent variables, the dimension increases so here it is just two dimension so as we increase the number of inputs the number of dimension would increase and we use uh, we use the ordinary least square solver method in order to identify the slope as well as intercept and hence generate the regression line and we we have covered about the r square value how the values are being computed and the values generally range between 0 and 1 it can draw in negative as well as uh, like technically it is possible so having covered about the concepts behind the linear regression model in the next session what we are going to do is we are going to see in detail about the implementation of the re uh, linear regression model using python so so before uh, logging off, if you are in, like if you like what I am doing here, please give a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to my channel. And see you soon in the next session with the implementation of the linear regression model. Bye. Until then.